Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and today we're in Vegas Pro 18 talking about layer dimensionality. Uh, I've mentioned it before as a uh, one of the ways you can composite something, uh, but we're going to talk about like a practical use case for it and what it really does. So first off, where you normally see it is uh, text. So this is the original shot. This is actually um, Michael Sarah from the movie Scott Pilgrim, and he's talking to the the character Ramona. I painted him out and put myself in it uh, for the purpose of an awkward intro I'm working on. And uh, it's working pretty good. I still got a few little paint outs to fix there. You can see his little sleeve there. That's just, you know, I'm still working on it. I've got a lot of effects going. One of those is layer dimensionality. So what this one particularly does is uh, it adds that background shadow. So let's let's talk about how to use it in another practical case first before we address how I've used it here. You go to media generators and you get something like text. Let me add a text track. And you grab text and you throw it on. And you can make the text look a little more in the environment with just a simple layer dimensionality effect. So we go back to the effects tab, grab the layer dimensionality. You can grab any one of these defaults here and it really adds a lot of presence to the, to the scene, mostly because uh, it adds a background shadow and also kind of rounds off some of the text there. So if you look at it on and off, you can see it actually adds a bit of a uh, embossing to it too. So um, let's talk about each of these and how they work. The height of the shadow is really just where the shadow is. Is it directly behind it or is it offset in some way? And then the blur of the shadow is how, how diffused is the light coming to make the shadow. Is it a hard shadow or a diffused shadow? Every shadow is usually just a hair diffused, so that gives it a bit more realisticness. Uh, the glow of the shadow, uh, right now we have none, but we could actually have it have some sort of glow around something. Uh, and you can change the color of that glow. This is a way you can actually make words highlight as well. Um, just something you can do uh, is just kind of pop this effect on and off and it makes kind of a bit of a highlight. We're gonna leave it on no glow though. So with the embossing, what you can do is uh, you can see you can actually make it look as if it's got some sort of dimensionality to it. That's what an emboss does. Is This now looks like it's a three-dimensional text uh, really, really severe because um, it adds like a roundness to a fake roundness to everything. While this gives it like a fake roundness in the opposite direction. So now it looks like it's kind of a hole in the wall. And this looks like it's uh, the other direction looks like it's actually exist. Um, like it's actual words that say sample text. Um, so that's a great way. It's not a 3D render. It's a fake 3D render and it's very, very good. Um, and so I, I usually like it. It, it. When you move this, it enables the embossing, and you can actually um, enable the intensity of the embossing, like how intense that light is, uh, how ambient that light is that creates the embossing. It's really, it's really, really good fake 3D render. Um, but then you can also mess with the light location elsewhere, and bit you can change how see-through it is. Um, but with this light location, this is where the bread and butter is because this is where you can actually match the source. So um, if, you know, a lot of times you might start off with like a default template that looks like this, but then you realize that the source lighting actually comes from in front of the characters. Let's look at the original. Oh, whoops. <laughs> The source lighting actually comes from in front of the characters uh, and cast a shadow behind them. And there's also some motivational lighting too uh, that's directly side lighting. So the shadow's got to come like down and back uh, for it to make sense. So let's go back to looking at everything and make the shadow. Uh, we need the light to be above it. And this little roll right here will change like where it is in 3D space next to it. Um, so you can actually mess with this and the shadow height here to kind of give it a more realistic location.
And uh, between these three dials, you can pretty much get a shadow any direction that you want. So uh, that is the layer dimensionality effect. You know, there's the sample text without it. There's the sample text with it. It's a great way to make something look like it belonged there in the first place without going through a full 3D composite. Now, why that's super helpful for a green screen is uh, if you look at this uh, green screen here, let's look at the event pan crop. This is the original shot. It's got my messy room with some lights and stuff. That's always fun. Uh, fun fact, this green screen, if you saw in my other video about fixing impossible green screens, actually... Uh, steaming out the back and ironing it um, made a big difference in actually lighting it like I knew I was supposed to do but I didn't for the sake of that video let's pretend it was for the sake of that video um, so so I've got tons of effects on this to actually make it look like it's in the thing I've actually got a whole nother video about that actually making yourself look like you're in a movie uh, but the layer dimensionality effect is super important let us unsolo this now The layer dimensionality effect is super important uh, for adding a shadow to a green screen character. It's a great way to, to put yourself in the scene a little bit uh, by giving yourself a shadow. And we can affect all those things, uh, like adding a bit of a blur makes it look a little bit more like there's a real light source behind it. Uh, the opacity, see, like what I love about this is now you can actually see the texture of the wall behind me, making me look like I really cast a shadow on that wall. Um, I get have to sacrifice that a little bit because to match the darkness of her shadow, uh, I have to get rid of a lot of the opacity because it's a pretty dark shadow. That is layer dimensionality effect in Vegas Pro 18 and a practical use case for it. Fun fact, if you're in movie studio and you want to do this, I didn't forget about you guys, but I can't do a whole video about it. If you wanted to do this an alternate way, i.e. you had movie studios and you did not have layer dimensionality, what you could do is you could take your chroma key mask and duplicate this this section here. Now it's got it would normally be just this chroma key mask. It would just be a bright white. You could uh, duplicate your clip, uh, leave the chroma key mask on, use the picture in picture effect to move the chroma key mask, and then uh, use it invert to make the mask black, and then um, then you could blur it right here on the chroma key too and then change the opacity on the clip and that would give you a very 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 similar effect so bonus fact for the movie studio people sorry there's not a whole video about it but uh thanks so much for watching like this video helped you out subscribe if you're looking for more i'll see you next time